of course. Handle with care, BBC Coventry and Warwickshire. That was selected by today's mid-show mover. It's the only person who can take over our radio station and pick two songs to brighten up our lunchtime. And today, picking the songs... <laughs> hurrah, it's Luke Smithard, Coventry author. Yay, hurrah! I can't believe you brought all those people into the studio. Yeah. Just, uh... just ushering them out. <laughs> well, I say author, author, musician, Buble impersonator, uh, all round good egg. You weren't supposed to mention that. You've got fingers in lots of pies. Uh, I, I spin a lot of plates and uh, it's very difficult keeping them all in the air, but it's. Do you uh, manage it? Just about so far, yeah. Now, which bit, which bit would you like to talk about? The, 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 the book, the, penny, the penning of the 100% book? Absolutely, 100% the book. I believe you're up for an award. That's correct. Uh, that's uh, one of the reasons I'm, uh, I'm here today, is that uh, my book, The Stone Man, um, which is actually set, in fact, where we're sitting now, is about how far is Millennium Place from here? About 300 oh, feet, yes. something like that? Literally, yeah. It's, you know, you can almost see it from distance, here, practically. Yeah, yeah. Um, the book all begins, it all starts and begins and it starts with a bang right in Millennium Place. Mm -hmm. And um, that book is, I say, set in commentary and it's now up for a, uh, a national award. Audible UK, which is, I'm sure your listeners will have, if they haven't heard of Audible, they will have heard of Amazon. Um, uh, Audible UK is Amazon's uh, audiobook arm and my book, The Stone Man, has been shortlisted in the final 12 against names like Stephen King and oh. J.K. Rowling oh. and uh, John Ronston for Audiobook of the Year. You're against J.K. Rowling. Yes, oh, again. We had a mud Gosh. wrestle a little while back and she's out for revenge. Because <laughs> quite frankly, I tap, made a tap like Fred Astaire. You are one. I love it. Um, well, let's go right back with you before we talk more about this specific book. You as an author, how long have you been writing for? Well, this is, I was, this is the thing. Um, I guess it's coming up to, what, five years now and... The Stone Man was written, I, I should really know this, I think about 2012. Mm. And and I've, since then I've written uh, the, uh, four novels and a collection of novellas. And it's really in the last sort of year or so that it's just sort of suddenly taken off. Um, the Stone Man's reviews really started to ratchet up um, so that it became a, my biggest seller. And then we did the audiobook version and that's going crazy guns at the moment and it's just funny how you can be plugging away at something and I'm sure there's people listening who are pursuing a mm. creative career who like myself were thinking man is anybody gonna like this is this ever gonna get anywhere and then just suddenly out of nowhere it can, it can really ratchet up yeah. and you're on the way uh, Luke stay where you are we must just get the latest on the roads because we've had a nightmare on the M6 today we'll see how it's all faring and then we'll be back with you and you've still got a song to pick of course uh, yes mm, stay where you are <laughs> with our mid-show mover, Luke uh, Smithard, Coventry author. Welcome back. Hello. Hello. Um, so, um, you were telling us about getting into writing and stuff. Uh, actually, let's go back even further. You say it's sort of five years or so you've been plugging away before you had this, this mm. turn of fortune and, and, and everything's on the, on, the, uh, on the incline now for you. Um, but have you always penned? Is it something that you've always well, done or that, did you make that, a conscious decision to well, try? Was, when I was um, younger, I was into writing a lot and... Yeah. Um, there's a, a, a story, actually. I, I was at a friend's wedding, and I met a, a friend of his who I didn't know, same age as me, and he, um, I found out he'd just been published. He'd written, he'd just got a two-book deal, so I, I automatically asked, like, oh, okay, who do you know on the inside? Because yeah. I'd, you know, I'd thought about writing something. I'd, ri I'd written a book at university, had sent it away, had nothing, never got anywhere, and he said, no, no, I didn't know anybody, I just plugged away and I did it. And I thought, well, right. I've got no excuse then. So I went away and wrote my first book, sent it off, sent it away, got nowhere, and then discovered um, that you can self-publish direct onto the Amazon Kindle, their e-reading mm. device. And I was like, well, if that's the case, you know, why not go for it? So everything I've done has all been self-published, um, uh, and in including the audiobook side of things. So there's not the barrier there once was to anybody that, mm. you know, anybody that's listening that thinks, oh, maybe I could have a go at it. it what You're I, not I get, in someone else's hands anymore, it, are there's you? There's no gatekeeper. Yeah. And I get emails all the time from people saying, oh, I've really enjoyed it. I've had this idea for a book, but I'd, I'd never do it. And I said, look, that's what I did. And there's, and not only that, you know, you make, you make a living off this. If you, if you plug away, you've got to be, you've got to engage with your readers, be, be open, be honest about it. And, and don't be a fright, don't be, more, most importantly, don't be frightened to ask for things. At the end of every book, I always leave a little thing saying, look, if you've enjoyed this, 
could you do me a favour and leave a review on Amazon? And as a result, like, the amount of, and some people don't like that, but the amount of people that leave reviews saying, I don't normally leave a review, but I didn't realise that it was important, so here it is. It just goes, I've, I've left all you know, sense of shame behind and have <laughs> essentially become a review whore. Wait, can I say whore? Is whore okay? Yes, that's fine. A review whore. A review, I don't know. Oh, are you yeah, sure? It your face it's too late now, no, I said no, okay. to I said be again. fair. A, re- a, a review uh, courtesan. Yes. And, you know, uh, and as a result of that, that, that sort of thing really helps, is those little... Just be honest about who you are and what you're trying to do. Well, you know, in life, you have to push yourself forward because no one else is going to. This is exactly... In any walk of life. Um, so the Stone Man, the one that's up for an award against Stephen King and J.K. Rowling, mm-hmm. oh, my goodness, uh, what's, it, what's it about? It's uh, it's kind of, it's, it's a, essentially a science fiction story, although I don't like to say science fiction because that makes it sound like it's ray guns and spaceships, and it's, it's really not. It's more about the people involved. But a uh, one day in the middle of nowhere... Not in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of Coventry. Careful, that's not going to keep people on side. Out of nowhere, uh, an eight-foot-tall man made of stone, a featureless sort of man-shaped figure, appears right in the middle of uh, Millennium Place, just from where we're sitting, and then starts to walk. No one knows where it's come from, no one knows where it's going, and it just starts to walk and walk through buildings, through, you know, can't be stopped. No matter what's sort of thrown at it, it just overcomes it. And it's all from the point of view of a local reporter who's not a very nice guy. He kind of has, a, you know, changes as the book progresses. But when we first meet him, he's very... Um, he's a review courtesan, you might say. And uh, he's trying to find out what's going on purely because if he, he thinks that if he does, he'll have fame and fortune and all this sort of thing. And then some very dark things happen along the way. And I don't want to say too much more without you know, you can't spoiling, too spoiling much. the story. No, no. But that's that's the basic premise. That's what all my work is all kind of like very strange situations, but looked at from a very realistic perspective. What genre would you call that? Well, actually, there's a name for it, but um, it's not one most people know, so I don't normally use it. It's called speculative fiction. Speculative fiction. And what that means is uh, speculative fiction is essentially... You know what if, mm. and looking at things. So say, for, so say for example, you know, an, an alien turned up right now in the recording studio. You know what would happen in the real world, not in some Hollywood film where we're all going to suddenly pull out guns and start shooting it down. You know, I'd probably saw myself and faint. You probably made a sterner stuff. You might, you know, tackle it. What would you, what would actually? You happen? think I'd tackle it, Luke? I don't. Know, it's only a little thing. It's really? About three foot tall. I nearly fainted when a clown came in <laughs> not long ago. It's three foot tall and waving a white flag. <laughs> but you attack it anyway because you don't like that kind of thing. And and, you know, just that idea, the idea of taking sort of strange, fantastical situations, yeah. but what would happen in the real world? And that's, that's speculative. Where do you write? Um, well, I, I've been travelling a lot uh, since, since I've been able to make a living off the, the books yes. and stop doing the music side of things. Um, I've been travelling a lot. I've been, in, uh, I've been in America, spent a lot of time in New York. I've been lucky enough to get around a lot of the States. But, um, but it's, a, it's, it's not just the writing as well. It's a constant process of... Um, shameless self-promotion i.e <laughs> this interview uh of, why of not plugging stuff online responding to emails setting up you know uh sales and that kind of thing and you, as i say you've got to spin a lot of plates so it, mm. it you it has a lot of free time that comes with it but it's also there's also a constant sense of you know you could be doing this you could be doing that and it's hard to get that balance you don't want to talk about buble god no no, no, no offence against the man. Okay, I used to do uh, a Michael Bublé uh, tribute show. It, it was a good living and met a lot of very like nice him. people. Sorry? You do look like him. Well, thank you very you much. Do. I mean, well, you know, well it, it, it's a diff- if, if I had a shave and put the suit back on... Do you want to give us a blast? Absolutely not. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. You see, if you don't ask, you don't get, you see. I'm taking your philosophy <laughs> but, here. But I've got to make sure, I've got to make sure I can tell... Because this is the important thing. The final of the final 12 audiobook of the year. Oh yes, can we help you? It's a public vote. Right. It's a public vote. Go on then. And there's one of two ways that you can vote. You can either go, well I've made it a bit simpler hopefully. You can go to the Audible UK main site Um, if you go to the main page you have to sort of sign in so it can be a bit difficult so what I've done is I've put the voting link on my website which is lukesmither.com s-m-i-t-h-e-r-d.com and then you can click on it there it takes about eight seconds if you go to my website lukesmither.com Click on the link I've put there. It will take you through to the voting link. Vote for one book. Mine, The Stone Man by Luke Smithard. And then We're having went, a lesson in gall here. Not, I love and, it. And not, only, and not only that, something else. Now, don't, don't quote me on this, but your listeners might not be aware if they weren't listening this morning. J.K. Rowling and Stephen King, I think, I might have been you know, drunk or something, but they're in the studio this morning, and they were saying they think the people of Coventry 
you know, stink. And the best way to stick it to them would be to vote. I mean, don't quote me on this. And whatever you do, don't quote the good people of BBC Coventry and Warwickshire because that's not a legally binding statement. I'm just a guess. But that's what they said about you. Now, if you want to stick it to them, you go and vote. Go to LukeSmith.com. Click on the audible.co.uk voting link. Vote for the Snow oh, Mother Luke. I think security coming in the room right now. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna... I like you very much, Luke. I... Thank you very much. <laughs> they stink. Oh, 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 there was one other thing. Go on. There was one other thing. And, 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 and. Yes, go on. If anyone who votes and sends me a uh, screenshot through of the, you know, thank you for voting page that comes up, email it to me and I'll send you a free copy, a free Kindle copy, and that'll be very, very clear, a free Kindle copy of The Snowman. Okay. There you go. Can't say fairer, can I've, I've you? I've come bearing gifts. It's Good Christmas. Good grief. Blimey. Santa Smithers. Final thing from you, your best Christmas joke, please, if you've got one. Now? Have you got one? Uh, yeah, I would have prepared. Uh, Come uh, on. Um, uh, the best Christmas joke. Any joke will do. Um... Any joke will do. Oh, I've got so many Christmas jokes. As soon I'm, as I'm, you leave the radio station, you'll come up with the best thing in the okay, whole world. Okay, uh, I've got one, but it's a little bit edgy. Forget that, yeah, okay, We've no, done okay. enough <laughs> yeah, in the duration of the interview. It involves uh, courtesans. Uh, yeah, 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 I know where you're going with that. <laughs> no, the mid-show movers, you've, you've had a chat. In return, we've played a couple of songs. Mm-hmm. Why the Wilburys that we started with? Uh, I'm a huge uh, Jeff Lynne band Jeff Lynne the pride of the uh, West Coast yes. and he's, he's obviously along well plus the fact Handle the Care is in my top three possibly top two favourite songs of all time it's funny isn't it because you have the top then top three top five oh top ten exactly. you, you it, can't it, decide it, it, I think it's my second favourite right. but um, because just as another as you, as you probably established James going out the window uh, <laughs> one of my readers recommended that I I uh, suggested a song with Stone in the title because the book's The Stone Man. Oh, there you go. So, uh, well, there's only one, the really, isn't there? From the Pride of the West Midlands, ladies and gentlemen, it's Turn to Stone by the Electric Light Orchestra. Thank you so much for Thank coming. Thank you very much, You are smashing. Merry Christmas to you. Same to you. Thank you.